Greetings and welcome back. It's been a short bit here for those who are regularly on the channel. Uh, for those who are new here, welcome. I'm Keen Pool. I do videos for Sengoku Dynasty and Medieval Dynasty at this time, mostly, and videos to help you out, and Let's Play videos as well. So since I've been gone, there's been an update, and also an update to the update, and I gave the initial reactions on the current update, and it has been nice. I've been having a lot of fun playing through those changes, and let's see here. I'm in a village making the latest one. So I figured, why not spend some time talking about some of the changes, things that have really worked nicely, and some things that are kind of like, a, eh, we're still going. I do the initial thing that is great, is the fact that right now you'll see I have a well to finish. I've got five stone, six logs, and 50. Well, let's see here, we got a ways to go on some of these things, but I'm not carrying all of them. I'm just kind of overloaded with other random stuff I haven't put away yet. But the village storage has all of the things that I actually need to build. Now, when I'm personally building my weapons, like the tools here, that's different. Now it's taken out of my personal inventory by the look of it. Let's see here. Cool. That does a nice thing so that when we come up to here, when I need to build this set of walls, what is nice is that I'm not carrying those planks, but I definitely have those planks. And that's going to allow me just to rapid fire go through here and I have it set on deliver with a click. I wanted to see what it was like as you go through the progression of skills to see if it feels like it's worth it to have some of those skills. It's also nice to have doors which automatically open. It's just a nice touch, right? It adds a little more to it. It did. I know I saw somebody in the comments who was saying, I would like to see doors. It can we just have doors. So this is a nice addition for that. Lots and lots of updates just to the storages. I've seen a number of these things looking different. Alright, that's good. It's definitely pulling from the village inventory because I am not carrying 50 cells. Cool. Seems to be very consistent, which is nice. There has been an update to needing bark more often, which has been a little less of a welcome change for me since I don't tend to care about getting bark off of things. So in the early game, I've definitely found myself going, wait, I need bark? Oh man. So that's been a new one for me, is having to actually remember to debark some logs so I have bark sitting around on hand. And so here, I've debarked a bunch just so I could have the stuff on hand. I don't want to be sitting around and run out. It's been one of those things where it's like, what, I really I need that so much more often for decorations and things? That's been helpful to have that around. Let's see here, we should definitely get that rolling. If you're newer to the game, this is a little ways in. I've built my first little bit of the village. If you haven't played the game before, I think my best way to start is still a good video for this since it's fairly consistent in how you begin the game and I do still think that this is where you want to be first is you want to get your you really want to get the woodcutters going and keep in mind again in case you haven't known this and or if you missed my video from before when you build this building when you build your woodcutters hut make sure you go to furniture and you go to production furniture and you go to woodcutter's furniture and add a second carpentry station. It will very much increase your quality of life because every one of these counts as two workstations now. And honestly, I really think that at the start of the game, my early village, I really think it's important. I'm just going to have probably two woodcutter's huts. I don't see why not. It's just I keep, I keep waiting on having more lumber and it just never shows up. There's just never enough. Never enough. So I think what I'll do is I'll have a second woodcutter's hut and we can always move it or just get rid of it. But it is really worthwhile having a second woodcutter's hut right away. I also noticed that early in the game, and there is a pile of clay there and that's my problem. I've also noticed that early in the game, if you don't have the woodcutter's hut, or I'm sorry, the wood storage, that you don't have access to just pulling wood out of thin air. It's got to be in your player's inventory. So this was a really quick build for me as soon as I had it. To get to the point where you're able to build out all these things, if you haven't unlocked everything and just said, hey, I want it all, then um, you do you are waiting a while, as you can see, waiting until different levels. I have still found that if you're doing the initial quest quests with Toshichi, that you are going to go quick. And a lot of them require you to just kind of travel. There's really no major issues getting around, and you can avoid most of the fights by running. And again, still making that money doing seashells. I will say, as far as skills are concerned, and, and kind of like best practices, if I could just give that tip real quick here and have you all just kind of make sure you're doing things in a way that'll work the best for you, is make sure you go right away to priorities and tell your workers what they can and can't eat. Like you do, I don't want them eating the meat before I cook it. 
otherwise not as useful, right? It just it doesn't give as much uh, it doesn't give as much for them for their food needs. And I've definitely found that they'll just kind of eat whatever works in priority list, of course. Go by numbers and go down. But heating, this is a big one for me. There's a, a huge collection of things where you're like, wait, no, I don't want you doing that. Don't don't be burning up your shoes and stuff. I haven't even made them yet. Charcoal works incredibly well. And firewood works really well. As soon as you can build a charcoal kiln, it's just better. Bark, of course, you can burn. But again, I've noticed that you need it more often. Bebby's, I don't think I touched it, honestly. I think I just left it be. The only thing I didn't want him drinking was sake, because I'm going to use that as a thing to make better, th to make more. I don't want him using clay just because the early game, it's so hard to get through all of that stuff. I really need these resources around. Oops, and then down here you can check that box to increase the, the consumption of things. And obviously the perks help with that. Now, the average happiness, I'm still working on that one, and we'll find that out in this episode. Because that's I want to answer that question. I don't touch the health stuff, it won't matter. And the security stuff, I ultimately will get rid of these where I don't want I don't want them just using these items because if it's consumable I don't want them to consume it I want them just to take the jobs so this is the only source I want is security jobs for this I don't want them just to go into the inventory and say cool go ahead and use all the well actually have fun use the wooden yari all you want <laughs> I don't need those things those turned out to be absolute garbage let's see here oh cool that's new Prayer beads will be good. Again, I don't want them consuming these things. Although at some point, I think we can actually make the tank guy a hat real easy. But going through and just making sure you don't have them consuming these things throughout is nice. No oh, thanks, counts as a um, spiritual need. Definitely want to get rid of that then. I don't want them using those up. And then of course, luxury goods. Just be careful. You don't really want them taking up all of your items. I think these are going to be easy, so those are good to go. And I obviously don't want them taking the pearl because I'm going to sell those for cash. Oops, draw hat. Yes, please. Go ahead. So from here, it looks like we have a lot of item thing, a lot of new items, which I'm excited for. I'm excited to see what they can do. And I'm not actually sure what the Elder even does. It just tells me things. Okay, great. So again, when you make this first one here, or sorry, when you make your woodcutter's hut, and this is just so that I can have the thing on hand because I want to be sure that I have a lot of workstations. I'm just not producing logs at the level I want. And I don't want to be doing the work for logs anymore. All right, once you have it done, you build, build that second workstation. Now I have two different spots that I can have my workers work, and that is super handy. I also wanted to move this thing. I wanted to get rid of that clay deposit so that I could just have this here. And I think what I'll do is we'll put it like this so that I can just walk right out into it. Ooh, but it's blocking itself for placement. Ooh, bummer. Okay. Nice. This is not exactly the best looking area, but that's okay. I'm not looking for appearances now. Alrighty, so as far as those skills were concerned, again, as I've looked through and I've kind of done my thing, I just got a perk for Craftsman. So I've been working on these. I kind of like, obviously, the decorations, right? And this thing, ooh, yeah, this is a thing. I like these little guys. Because you can just drop that traveler's work, uh, this little outpost, and then you can teleport backwards between things. So this has been handy because then I can go and get seashells, and then when I get tired of it, I can warp back home, and then later on I'll go back there and finish gathering seashells when I'm tired. When I'm not tired of doing that. This one, mm, I've definitely noticed there being more loots in chests, but I wouldn't tell you that it's affected my gameplay at all. I mean, honestly, it's it hasn't done anything to. It hasn't meant that I found something super cool yet. If you found something super cool, throw it in the comments. I'm kind of curious what everybody else has found with that, if that's where you went. I definitely went with efficient meals distribution, and I'm definitely going to start going on to the firewood version of that one, just because, you know, why not? And this, I don't know, I'm curious what happens with this one. But this has been a thing. I'm aiming to get this, but it looks like we can only do so when we get to the point where we've actually unlocked all the perks for it. And I've definitely favored, as I'm guessing a lot of y'all have, I've definitely favored skills that give me just general skills. Where, like this, I want all of the things from the from animals. This, I want all of the stamina, because I know that helps me in every aspect of the game. So I just keep going after it. And then Monk, uh, again, <laughs> stamina, and obviously I do craftsman things more often. So I've kind of laid into that more. And I definitely have enjoyed the fact that there is some amount of unlocking of things through here. And I enjoy that there's small incremental changes. The only thing I'm worried about thing with things like skills here, Way of the Craftsman, is that this stops being useful to me right about now in my village where I have 
too many workstations for wood and I'm about to have villagers doing all of the work for me. And then I stop needing to chop down trees and then I stop needing the skills and then they stop feeling really impactful. And then, yeah, they were great for a little while and now I just have them sitting here for nothing. So I can kind of imagine that these won't, I don't think these will play off over time too well. Even with this, I think efficient, I think farming is the only way I'm going to want to go because that's probably the only skill I might do late game. I don't find that I'm going to need many of these. Efficient miner, that's great, but I need this early game. I don't need this late game. I'll have people for that. And as far as this is concerned, yeah, it'd be great to get more logs, but again, I'm not going to need this late game, and this is a late game skill right here, and it's not necessary then. All right, well, <laughs> this was an interesting change, and I wanted to point out is that here we are in the um, the tailor's hut that I've been aiming for for quite a while. And uh, it's got all the things, kinda. We've got everything except we don't have... We don't have the actual tanning vat, so obviously I've got to build that one. But then when I'm looking at this, I'm going like... Where? Oh yeah, and of course you can't unlock it until later. So, yeah, that's kind of an interesting little like... Oh, it's not even here yet. I feel like that's kind of a necessary piece. I do very much love the updates to the storages. That looks cool. I mean, it looks, it definitely just looks cooler. So it's nice to see the improvements to visuals, right? Like that's been good. And I'm looking forward to the visuals continually improving, obviously for character models and things like that. The tool storage, I don't know, is a thing. It kind of just looks like the shed became purposeful and we'll kind of see where that goes. And this is entertaining. I have come into the area of rabbits. Look at all of them. I think, I think they're watching me carefully. Don't know if I'm gonna survive the day. I might get mauled by a gang of rabbits. I also do appreciate that they uh, they brought back the ability to harm things with tools because <laughs> chasing down this rabbit, I'm like, oh yeah, can I damage you at all? And sure enough, you can. And of course, no fangs, no crazy things from rabbits. It'd be nice if we could get a rabbit's foot out of that just as a you know little lootable, right? Because then the rabbits feel kind of useful. Also, for those who are looking for it, and I noticed I found myself struggling with this initially, is that if you're looking for where to build the buckets, you go into farming, and now the buckets are kind of hidden here. So that was, uh, yeah, I didn't expect that to be located there, but it kind of made sense, of course, afterwards. So if you're looking for buckets, there we go. Now, one of the interesting things, too, to make note of, and I'm curious where this goes in time, is that uh, when you do craft out of a storage, like I just crafted these things out of a storage, the fruit logs go into the crafting station, but then they get exported into your inventory. So that can be a thing that you consider as you go for, hmm, I gotta make sure I have room in my inventory to drop these things off, right? One of the things that I'm gonna look into as we go, and I'm curious if anybody knows this, and please put in the comments if you do, I believe that the taking of resources out of your storages, like say planks, where I just had a thing that showed me I have 150 some odd planks that I can take to build any structure I want. So I'm like, oh wow, let's build all the things. But I don't want to be just randomly building I don't want to be building things out of my fruit planks because those are worth my maintenance. So that'd be one of those things that might be worth looking into is just to say, hey, are you noticing your fruit planks getting taken randomly or is it always going to priority order? Which I believe it does for any plank. And of course, don't forget, max out your beds right away just so you can get your village ramped up fast because that's exactly what's going to happen here is we're going to ramp up fast. We're going to get this village up and going. And as you can see, this is that this is the joy of having this little traveler's outpost thing is that here I am back in this area easily this season. That's super handy to be able to just navigate this quickly because I put this in a spot where I could easily get back to the seashore area or I could get to Segi if I planned on doing things there. Obviously, I could have just traveled straight to Segi, but it is super handy having it there by the mine so I can get the mine uh, resources out. I do appreciate that a number of the environments have changed. Like this area here, whenever I have always run up this hill from Aratani to get to the to get to the temple. So this is me running up this hill here. And I always remember the bears being here since the update for bears. But I don't remember the bamboo thicket being right here extended so far. So that's really nice. I like that they've changed things. There's other places that have changed as well, which has been cool to see. Yeah, sure enough, look at that. Got a nice new wall here to walk to the temple. Oh boy. And they've definitely changed the texture for the uh, Japanese cedar because it is... 
it is causing my system to be angry. Oh, it's bogging us down here a bit. Ha ha ha. And again, we get lucky <laughs> when we spawn in here and we uh, spawn outside the cage. Uh, I'm curious what they do with this quest later on. I'm pretty sure what ends up happening is the leader of the village here in Segi gets ticked off at you and basically says, um, I'm guessing they give you an ultimatum and you have to fight your way out, which would be cool. Looking forward to that one uh, being fleshed out later. I didn't even realize I was at the end of a season, so let's see where we ended up. We have a number of people who are happy. Now, the point of looking into this is I am going to do, we're going to do a compare and contrast before the end of this. I want to see if we're actually getting more work out of two workers who are at different levels of happiness, because that kind of matters, right? They did say that the happiness uh, system was implemented, so for me I want to see what that looks like, because I remember what it was like before two updates ago, and I remember it being functional, but I don't remember... Hey, look at that. New season, I can finally get this thing, although I'm <laughs> such a small amount of experience away from doing this. I'm probably better off just hiring on two people and being done with it. I can always buy it. Well, if you don't know, here there's a little trick. So we'll just do this, just because in case you haven't seen this, it's worth the trick. Where let's see here. I need to have it I need to have the uh tandy station. I buy it. It's unlocked. I take it. I sell it. It cost me three hundred. Cool. Not bad. It's not bad. It's okay, you know? So not a bad thing. I suppose we should see if we can do the same thing in Iwasaki. Now that we have all the temple or all the locations unlocked, that's kinda nice. So here we are, we're kinda going piece by piece in this little thing. I'm just kinda giving you snapshots of where we're at. I do appreciate the new area idea where it's like, uh, oh, these are different regions, and I'm hoping that that means something, right? That that means that we're going to do something with those different things. Oh, masterwork pickaxe. Ooh. Hmm. I need a lot of pickaxes for one of my quests. Go figure. <laughs> we'll end up getting there, that's for sure. Oh, dear. It does take a while. Okay, it doesn't look like we need anything from here. And by the way, when you are here, I do find it's nice and helpful to, if you have an iron axe, to chop down bamboo while you're around. Those bamboo thing, the bamboo trees go a lot longer to getting you what need, you need. All right, we finally have our tanning vat. Now we just have to figure out where we're gonna cram it here. That's one of the problems here is that. Um, oh dear. Yeah, shoot. I guess we're gonna. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Eh, I don't know. The uh, you can always move these little guys. You can move any of the storages. So I'm gonna do that. I uh, I don't know. I mean, I know they're making updates and everything's early and we're they're making changes. But let's see here. I'd say I'm not the hugest fan of where the placement of the items were in this one. Because like having the tanning bed, I, I kind of liked having them in the far corner over here. And now I have to move a bunch of stuff just to get to that. All right, there we go. Now we're finally at the spot where we can do things. I don't think it's going to take out of our storage, so this is a little bit of an interesting thing. I'm hoping that they can improve this to say, if there's bark in a storage, and if there's fur in a storage, and if there's water in a storage, then boop, we can just throw stuff in here. And just as I say that, of course, I'm wrong. I just didn't have the, I didn't have the storages, right? So I didn't have a beverage storage built. So real quick, I built a beverage storage, and then when I held down E, it pulled whatever it could out of all of the spaces it could. Now it took everything that was going to make this work. In other words, I had more than enough water, but I didn't have enough fur. So it took all the fur and then everything else proportionally. So nice job, devs. Thank you for that. That makes things very comfortable and very nice. All right, the seasons changed on me. And unfortunately, what I really wanted is I really wanted to have my farming start last season because I bought a bag so that I could plant soybeans. Well, that's a bummer because I certainly don't need... <laughs> No, I don't need this bag anymore. Dang it. Oh, well. We'll make do. I definitely want to get rice up and going because rice is still, I believe, the go-to when it comes to getting your people fed. It's just so handy. And you'll note that in this location, seasonality changed and... Or, <laughs> seasonality matters for our plants. Seasons changed. Oh, holy cow. We got canola. All the canola. Kind of an absurd thought, but somehow was just, just on my mind was that what if... What if there was a skill that allowed you to use a weaker tool to mine things that were bigger just because, right, you're so much better at mining? Obviously, it doesn't make realistic sense. But then again, I mean, 
I'm not sure it makes too much sense for me to have a stone pickaxe eating iron anyway. But anyway, just kind of a random thought as a, huh, I wonder if this would feel more impactful as a future perk where I can use a lesser tool more effectively to mine larger things. I also do love the idea that I'm starting to notice that people talk about different skills they have. I had one person say, hey, if you're trying to, we're trying to make a village and I happen to have been a blacksmith before. And that's kind of like, a, oh, are you telling me that at some point we might have people who have skills and that those skills might be a part of why we hire them on and we can be choosy and find people who are, say, skilled in a certain area? Like, oh, this person's better at, uh, this person's got craftsman levels, let's say, and they happen to be a great blacksmith. Nice. Or this person's a miner or this person's a farmer, right? Like, those could be great. I wonder if those are implementations that are coming just because they've shown up in dialogues and I don't remember them being there before. <laughs> Oops, it hasn't rendered yet. I do love the views from all the way up here. It does look a little funny when it doesn't render the complete distance because like that swamp over there looks real weird. Anyway, well, let's see here. So as you visit your statues, ideally we're going to get a, we'll get a level here. Hmm. I guess not. So I don't have a yellow chrysanthemum anyway. So, hmm, that's too bad. But, I was hoping we'd get away at the monk level here. Oh well. Again, it has been nice. I mean, one of the big things that's a huge creature comfort is this whole idea that now I can build my farmland and I don't have to go into the inventory and I don't have to, like, pull things out. Oh, and now there's no flatland. So that's not going to work out. <laughs> Shoot. I was hoping to build all my farmland on this hill here, and that is certainly not going to work out. So I guess we'll just have to hope for the best here. Like a flat terrain means that that's where the problem's at. Oh, man. Yep, we're going to have to work on our flat terrain area. All right, and for testing purposes, we're definitely going to have our plots be all the way up to 35, because I want to see... I want to see if you actually have to... if we Again, so that we can see if there's any impact for the happiness system at this point. So back in the day, the impact would have been that you could get up to 30. And obviously the number of sticks is telling me where I'm at. So this is a 35 and a 35, that should give me plenty. I should have a water field at some point here, but it's gonna look real bizarre, given that there's really no sense in having a water field anywhere around here, but oh well. Kind of a fun little side note that I noticed is that uh, so here I can see that I can access my resources. So now, oh, I see. I was uh, I was outside my build zone. I didn't even notice it. And it said I had zero. So cool. It actually does things within the bounds. So that's cool. I appreciate that that's a thing I didn't notice, but that is there. That's just kind of fun. All right, so a little comparison. As I took two people, right? Here's a Sago and here's Sayori. They're both the exact same job. And I'm seeing 207 out of Sayuri, even though she's at level content. And I'm seeing Osago, who is at level happy. But I'm also seeing that they're giving me the exact same amount of production. So I'm kind of curious how that's working out. I'm not 100% sure that the happiness system... This will take more, and as we do this playthrough, I'll try to mess around with things. But this will be an exploratory playthrough, seeing the different things in action as we go. I would love to have gotten a start on this sooner and had this video out to you all quicker. Sorry that it's taken so long to get it out. We had some vacations going on and then uh, I, real life came back at me where I got um, my work started up again. So I got to do the standard 9 to 5 thing. So the recordings will try to be on a weekly basis and still be consistent. And I am still working on my projects. The... Discord server is almost ready. I just have a lot of small details that I have to get done because I just realized I have to get all the administrative things set up and make sure they have everything properly going. So be ready for that one. I'll have an announcement out for that soon. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you uh, being a part of this channel. If you haven't, a like and subscribe go a long way and appreciate the time you spend here. And I hope you're enjoying your playthrough. By all means, let me know how things are going. It's fun to see and hear what's going well for y'all. Take care. One of the things I'm noticing here, so as you start to plan out your people, you'll notice that I've got, what, these three t slots and I built my iron axes, right? So 
when I was doing things before, I was definitely kind of spreading out the workload amongst people and just being like, okay, well, I need this amount of things, so I'll have you do this, this, and this. Before, you had multiple slots that you could utilize for them doing this work. And what I'm seeing here is that, let's see here, let's do a quick comparison. Let's get rid of that and let's get rid of that. And let's have you, you are just my coniferous log dumper. About 38 of them. So now we've got you set. That's 38 logs from this person. Yes. No, 40. I'm sorry, 43. So then let's go to Akko. Now Akko is also getting coniferous. No, let's not do that. No, don't worry about that. Let's get rid of that. Let's say Akko is my premium log getter. Now I've got her getting 28 of these. We should probably make sure we're doing the Iron X. That turns out to be 32 of those. Now before, I would have gotten like an 8 and a 16. So, let's see here. Look at another worker here. Hmm. I don't know if I need that hunter's rack there. Or hunter's workstation. Alright, and let's get rid of this. Now, we can have this. Sorry. Let's get rid of that. Now we have 26 fruit logs. All right, not bad. And let's do one more worker and we'll do a quick compare. What else could we possibly need? We could get premium deciduous or we could start getting paper or we could start getting bamboo if I want to do that. Let's see, actually I'm curious if they actually, I'm, I'm curious if this is improved because I recall this being one where it just doesn't produce at a level where it's worth it. Nah, 52 is certainly not worth it. You can get 52 bamboo on your own in no time at all. I'll say premium deciduous. That gets us at 32. Okay. So now I've got a person who is working 43 coniferous and 32 premium coniferous. And then we've got 26 for fruit. Okay. Let's say I do a jack of all trades on this one. Let's just go with what I was doing before. And let's say we do each of these. We don't want this. I want premium conifer instead. Now, what I could do here is I could say, all right, let's get us 16 of these because I need a lot of that. Fruit logs probably need only eight. And for these, I can get up to nine. Now, if I do this amongst all my people and happiness doesn't appear to matter too much, I'm getting four people, premium coniferous at 16. That should get me... 32 for 2, and the logs, I'm getting, root logs, I'm getting 8. Oops, my apologies. Hmm. This might actually be better. So if I do my fruit logs down to 8 again, interesting, it might actually be worth just playing it out with these and multitasking, just because of how much... Let's see here. Let's say I keep it at 16. Now I'm getting 9 of those. Hmm. It says no worker, but we clearly have somebody there. 9, 8, 16. Okay. 9, 8, and 16. Mm hmm. And here. I mean, gee, actually, <laughs> this is not paying off. I don't want a person doing a singleton thing, right? Like, here we look at this, and I have Akko just gathering pre premium coniferous, right? And I could just spread that workload amongst all of them, and then I'm getting more out of the deal than I was if I separated it. Interesting. Hmm, there's going to be a little bit of playing around with this, I do believe. Because that is not what I initially expected. I expected... I definitely expected this to go better for... Just kind of to not spread the workload out. I expected this to go very differently. <laughs> Interesting. Well, as a little aside at the end here, I hope this has been helpful. Because this has been a little eye-opening for me. And I'm curious what you all found. Because now here I'm spreading out this workload. This is still really good. And can I, when I maxed it out for her, she was getting 43 coniferous logs. Can I do two of the same? No, of course not. That's fine. So then, can I get to that same level with coniferous? And what will I be left with? And I 
gets me eight premiums. That's 19 there. Let's say drop one of those. Ooh, that's a twofer. I'm not dropping that one. Some of the percentages, you get a fairly big increase. So that's 20 here. And where was I at for 24? There we go. We just beat. We just beat the maximum for this one, right? And I'm getting more resources, right? Let's max this out. And you can hold it down. It goes faster. Yeah, 43. Okay, so yeah, I got 42, but... This is hmm, mm -mm, this is not as much as I could have expected to get out of it because now, if I spread the workload amongst two people, I still get more. Huh? Interesting side note, and it's something that I was just kind of messing around with, and I wanted to add to the end of the video here. I hope this is helpful for y'all. Again, thanks for being here. Thanks for taking the time, and yeah, it looks like spreading the workload out is still worthwhile, and you can just choose to kind of specialize amongst it.